Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I have some very good news and some exciting news for you all. My friends at Boson have agreed to do a giveaway for you, my viewers. When I was studying for CCNA, CCNP, and CCNA security, I used Boson's products to help me prepare for the exam, and I have recommended Boson's products since. You can take a look at my zero to CCNA in eight weeks video, my CCNP in 12 weeks video, and my CCNA security video. In each of them, I recommended Boson. They really are the gold standard when it comes to practice exams, and their NetSim, though not as well known, is also a really great product. For my CCNP, I also used their courseware, which is essentially a textbook with additional practice labs. I can't recommend their products enough. So I will be giving away two copies of NetSim for CCNA and two copies of XSIM for CCNA 200-125 which is the composite exam. For those of you who don't win or want a different product, however, Boson currently has a 25% off sale on their site. Follow the links in the description and use the code MARY19 at checkout for 25% off. Let's take a look at NetSim. Boson's NetSim is a network simulator, similar to Packet Tracer, but much more powerful. For those of you who have done my CSENT and CCNA Packet Tracer Practice Lab series on YouTube, you know I had to use GNS3 for a few labs because of Packet Tracer's limitations. Boson's NetSim doesn't have those limitations and is powerful enough to do even CCNP level labs. NetSim for CCNA includes a series of labs for both ICND1 and ICND2. These are pre-made labs with step-by-step -step instructions as well as lab solutions. I'll give a quick demo in a bit. Also, I will be giving away XSIM, and that's two copies for the CCNA 200-125. You're probably already aware, but there are two possible ways to get your CCNA. You can take the ICND-1 and ICND-2 exams, or just take the single composite exam. This is XSIM for that composite exam. It's generally thought that the composite exam is more difficult, but it's what I took, and I passed it with no previous experience, and so can you. So, let's take a look at XSIM and NetSIM. Okay, so this is XSIM for the CCNA Composite Exam 200-125. As you can see, there are five practice exams, A, B, C, D, and E. Each has 73 or 74 total questions. Uh, there are two study modes. Simulation mode doesn't show which you got right and which you got wrong, and also doesn't show any explanations, so I prefer study mode. Now let's go back to exam A. Uh, I'll click begin and show you a few questions. Okay, so you administer the network shown above. You have created two VLANs, VLAN 1 and VLAN 2. Okay. Host A and host B are in VLAN 1. Host C and host D are in VLAN 2, okay? Okay, so this is inter-VLAN routing between the two VLANs. The switch is not a Cisco switch. Fast Ethernet 0 on router A is in the up state. Okay. You show the, uh, show the running config on router A and receive the following output. Encapsulation ISL. Okay, I think I found an issue here. Uh, ISL is a Cisco proprietary protocol, so this is not a Cisco switch, so it can't use ISL. So we're probably going to be changing this to .1Q. Which of the following commands should you issue on router A to enable inter-VLAN routing? Shutdown? No. Switchboard mode access? No. It's not a switchboard. Uh, no shutdown? No. It's already in the up state. So it must be answer D. I don't even have to read it because I know these four are wrong, but let's see. Right, encapsulation.1Q, encapsulation.1Q, exactly. So if this were a Cisco switch, ISL could be used, but again, it says it is not. Uh, the switch is not a Cisco switch, so we have to use .1Q as the encapsulation. Uh, let's hit show answer, and we got it correct. Here it has an explanation for why this is the correct answer, and then also explanations for each of the incorrect answers, explaining why they are incorrect. And then here are references to both Boson's uh, courseware, and then some links to Cisco documentation so you can read up further. 
Okay, let's go to the next question. Hopefully I get this one correct too. You receive the following output on the console of router A. Okay, neighbor is down, it's EIGRP. So an EIGRP neighbor has gone down. Which of the following statements is true? Logging history size one has been issued. Okay, I don't know that. Emergency level severity code. Emergency, no, this is five. Five is, what is that, notice? I believe, notice. Uh, service timestamps, debug, date time, MSEC. Okay, this is probably our answer. And let's check the last one. The default logging facility code is being displayed in the output. The default facility code is being displayed in the output. Is this the default? I don't know, but I think C is the correct answer. Yes, it is. Okay, so service timestamps debug daytime msec command has been issued on router A. Again, explanation of why this is correct and why the others are incorrect. And I was correct. Uh, five is notifications or notice, as I said. Emergency is zero, so that's the most severe level. Okay, uh, let's do one more question. This will be a last one. You are configuring an MLP bundle, multi-link PPP, okay? Which of the following should you not do? Enable MLP by issuing the PPP multi-link command. No, that's something you should do. Assign an IP address to each physical link in the bundle. I believe you should not be doing that. Issue the encapsulation PPP command on each physical link, that's okay. Ensure that each end of the bundle is operating on the same subnet. That's okay. So I believe the answer is B. Okay, there we go. So again, explanation why it's correct and why the other ones are incorrect. Okay, so once you've finished all the questions, you can hit end and grade. And it will give you a score. Okay, and show you which ones are correct, which are incorrect, category breakdown, um, of the CCNA exam categories, network fundamentals, LAN switching, routing technologies, WAN technologies, infrastructure services, infrastructure security, and infrastructure management. Okay, so generally it's thought that the Boson exams are more difficult than the real exams. So if you're getting good scores on these exams, if you're passing or even close to passing, you're probably going to be good to do the real thing. I was getting around low 700s on my first attempts at these exams, and I got over 900 on the real thing. So that shows you that um, if you're getting good scores on Boson, you should be ready for the real thing. Okay, let's take a look at NetSim now. Here on the left are all of the pre-made labs they have. Here's ICND1, tons of pre-made labs, ICND2, tons of pre-made labs, and then here are the CCNP labs I used while I was studying for my CCNP. Route, Switch, and T-Shoot. T-Shoot is my personal favorite, by the way. Okay, so I've already loaded up a CCNA lab, this OSPF2 lab. When you first click on it, you'll get a little lab preview, and then you click Load Lab, and you get the lab instructions. You can also click Lab Topology. It gives you a topology view, but there's not a lot of information here in terms of uh, interface numbers and IP addresses. So I prefer to look at the topology here on the lab instruction view. Okay, down below is a command summary. These are the commands you need to know to complete the lab. And a summary again of the IP addresses. So let's get started. Task one involves examining the network configuration. Um, let's go down here, examine the routing topology. So we have to log onto the Key West router the devices are all here. I'll click Key West and console. It says all passwords have been set to Cisco. So Cisco, I'll enable again Cisco. What command should you use? Sorry, what command should you issue to display the routing table on Key West? That would be show IP route. Okay, what conclusion can you draw regarding the operation of the OSPF routing protocol on Key West? Well, we've got two routes. They're both indicated with C, so that means connected. So we're not getting any OSPF routes. So I would say OSPF is not operating properly. 
Okay, what command should you issue to display the currently executing configuration on key west? That is the running configuration, so show running config. Okay, is OSPF running on key west? Well, yes it is. Router OSPF1. But this network command looks wrong. We've got a slash 32. This is a wildcard mask, so this o.o.o.o is the same as a slash 32 mask. So we're probably gonna have to fix that. What would prevent OSPF from detecting the other networks in the topology? Well, if we look at the interfaces, they're not covered by this network command. So OSPF is not activated on the two interfaces. So let's fix that. Conf T. Now, but that is step C, by the way. Correct the configuration. Router OSPF 1. Uh, let me show the running config once more. Do show run section OSPF. And let's remove this network command first. No network 200.120.45.0 slash 32 wildcard mask area zero. Okay, let's confirm it's gone. Okay, now let's put in the correct network command. Network 200.120.45.0 and I'll give it a slash 24 mask. 0.0.0.255 area zero. Okay, now let's see if the neighbor comes up. I don't even know if the neighbor has OSPF properly configured yet, so it might not work. Let's type end show IP OSPF neighbor. Oh, so it does have a neighbor, and there we go, from loading to full. So the OSPF neighborship is up. Let's see if we've gotten any routes yet. Not yet. Um, hopefully, oh, there we go. So we've got our OSPF routes. Okay, and then you can continue examining the remainder of the topology. Uh, you can see routes are missing, so I guess we'll do some more configuration changes on other routers. And then once you're done, you click here, Grade Lab. And as you can see, I missed some commands because I stopped halfway through. Uh, the green check mark means there are no problems on these devices. So here, Key West, we configure that correctly, our OSPF. But uh, Tampa, Orlando, and Daytona are not properly configured. Uh, for example, here on Daytona, this red means that it's a missing command. So we should have configured this command. And blue is an extra command. So this is a command we either don't need or a command we should have deleted. So this command was already on the router but we were supposed to delete this command and add this command. Okay, so remember to enter the giveaway via the links in the description. For those of you who don't win or want to purchase a different product from Boson, follow my links in the description to Boson and use the code MARY19 to get a 25% discount. Thank you to all of you, and of course, thank you to Boson for making this happen. Good luck.